After finding the wreckage of an alien ship, an airline pilot finds a ring that gives him powers and accidentally puts Earth in the sights of the Devourer of Worlds. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Green Lantern, from 2011. Billions of years ago, the Guardians channeled the energy of willpower and built a world from which they could keep watch over the rest of the universe, the planet Oa. With their base built, the Immortals divided the universe into 3,600 sectors and sent a ring of willpower to find a chosen one in each sector. As soon as it finds a recruit, the ring takes him to the planet Oa and the Guardians begin their training, which over time has formed the powerful Green Lantern Corps. Thousands of years after their foundation, the Lanterns were confronted by the entity of Fear, Parallax, and only Abe and Sir was able to capture it, imprisoning it on a desert planet in the lost sector of the universe. But now, to everyone's misfortune, a group of alien astronauts have an accident and make a forced landing on the planet's surface. Wandering around the place, the explorers accidentally fall into a crater and end up right where Parallax is, waking up the entity that feeds on their fear and finally gets enough energy to free itself. Now that Parallax is on the loose, Abe and Sur goes back to hunting it down until he arrives in Sector 2814, where the entity was last seen. After days of travel, Abe and Sur communicates with Sinistro to say that he is coming to help his fellow Green Lantern, but the leader of the troop replies that this is no longer necessary, as Parallax has already sucked the energy out of all the life forms on the planet, including the ring bearer. Unable to believe it, Abe and Sur ended the call and almost immediately heard someone calling his name, receiving a surprise attack immediately afterwards. Suddenly, Parallax appears inside the ship and starts chasing Aben, managing to hit a blast of fear energy near the Green Lantern's shoulder. With the entity taking over the entire spaceship, Aben Sur goes to the escape pod and ejects, recording one last message to Sinistro to warn him about the attack by Parallax, stating that he is going to the nearest habitable planet so that the ring can select his replacement. Back on Earth, a fighter pilot called Hal Jordan wakes up late for a flight test and drives all the way to the Ferris hangar. There, Carl, the company director, presents the powerful Sabre 3, an artificial intelligence-powered fighter that promises to put an end to human error, to a group of interested parties. Interested in the project, the US general came for a visit and Senator Hammond will personally witness the negotiations. With everyone present, Hammond says he wants to see how the Sabre performs in a simulation and asks two of the AI-guided fighters to take on two of Ferris's best pilots. In the air, Hal and Carl's daughter begin their flight and are soon caught by the Sabres, which chase the man while the woman tries to stabilize her aim. As soon as she manages to break, Carol fires a shot through the simulator and the pair of jet robots manage to dodge it almost instantly. Thinking of a way to finish off the fighters, Jordan uses Carol as bait and tries to shoot him from behind, but the Sabres manage to hit the girl and deflect the shot. Alone against the two ships, the pilot decides to try to escape by gaining altitude and the controller Tom warns him that all the jets stop working after passing 50,000 feet, including his own. Even so, the pilot continues to climb until all three aircraft begin to fail. Even in free fall, Hal manages to aim at the two Sabres and hit them, winning the simulation, but when it comes to stabilizing the aircraft during the fall, he starts to remember the day he saw his father lose his life in a plane crash right in front of him. Lost in his memories, Hal can't keep control and ends up going into a spinning spiral as he gets closer and closer to the ground. When he gets below 10,000 feet, Tom tells him there's no time to get out of the spin and tells Hal to eject, leaving the pilot with nothing to do but watch as his jet crashes to the ground. Back at Ferris, Carol and the rest of the team start arguing with Hal, saying that in addition to destroying a brand new fighter jet, after the simulation the company lost its contract and will now have to fire most of the employees, starting with him. After the rest of the team leaves the office, Carol asks what happened and Hal says his controls crashed, prompting the woman to argue that he had time to recover and still didn't do it. Refusing to admit what has happened, Hal insists that the control has crashed and the two end up in an argument. A few miles away, Abe and Sir lands on the coast and uses what little energy he has left to send the ring in search of a new bearer. Without realizing what is happening, Hal Jordan goes to his brother's house to celebrate his nephew Jason's birthday. After handing the boy a miniature jet, he walks back to his car when he is captured by the ring that starts transporting him to the beach. After a less than smooth journey, Hal is dropped off in front of a spaceship and sees something moving inside. Wanting to help anyone, the pilot rushes to the vehicle and is impressed by Abe and Sir's appearance, but even though he finds it strange that he has magenta skin, he decides to try to call the hospital for help. Before he can do this, Aben asks for him by name and reveals that the ring has chosen him as its new bearer, so he must get the lantern from the ship and take it home where he must swear an oath. As soon as he finishes giving the warning, Aben Sur loses his life and his costume disappears almost instantly. 
Not knowing what to do, Hal calls Tom and asks for his friend, who comes to help him, but as soon as he arrives at the place, two army helicopters also show up and the pair rush to the jeep to flee the scene. While Hal and Tom drive to safety, Sinistro meets with the Guardians and tells them about Abe and Sir's elimination at the hands of Parallax. Wanting to avenge his friend, Sinistro asks for permission to gather some men and go after the entity before it devours other worlds, getting the support of the Guardians to do so. On Earth, scientist Hector Hammond is at home playing a game of online chess when someone starts ringing the doorbell. When he answers the door, the biologist comes across two very strange men who order him to accompany them. With a hood over his head, Hector is taken to a secret base where he is introduced to Amanda, who takes him to the laboratory and asks him to analyze the body of the alien they have found. Although confused, the man accepts the task and starts working on Abe and Sir's body, but when he goes to analyze the wound on his chest, Hector ends up coming into contact with remnants of Parallax's energy that enter through his finger. Unaware that he has been contaminated, Hector finishes the analysis and gives the hard drive with the data to Amanda. Meanwhile, Hal arrives home with the lantern and swears the oath as Abe and Sir asked, but is interrupted by Carol who arrives at the apartment door wanting to talk. Afraid that she will find out something, the man takes her to the bar where they finally settle the fight they had earlier. That's only until Carol tells him that she's analyzed the flight data and noticed that the controls haven't crashed. Upset, Hal leaves the woman alone in the bar and goes to the parking lot, but when he is fiddling with the keys to unlock the car, he is surprised by some men who have also been fired from Ferris because of him. Even alone against three, Jordan tries to defend himself, but the men hold his arms and he ends up taking quite a beating. As the trio are leaving, the pilot tries to throw a metal object at the trio and accidentally activates his green lantern powers, materializing a fist of energy that hits all three of them at once. Suddenly, a sphere of energy begins to form around Hal, who desperately tries to remove the ring, but the object seems to stick to his finger and begins to take him away from the earth, all while Hector suffers from the cellular mutations of Parallax. After a long journey across the universe, Hal finally arrives on the planet Oa where the suit appears on his body for the first time. As soon as Hal wakes up, Tomar Ray appears and introduces him to the planet of the Green Lanterns, as well as giving him his first flight instruction. Together, they fly over Oa and Tomar Ray explains the power of willpower, the energy that carols the ring of the Green Lantern Corps. After explaining everything, the veteran lantern takes the newcomer to the center of the planet where the other lanterns have gathered to listen to Sinistro's speech about the danger that Parallax represents for the troop. After the troop leader's speech, Tomar Ray takes Hal to the training camp and explains a little more about how the ring works, revealing that the artifact is capable of materializing everything his mind can imagine, what they call constructs. When it's his turn to try, the Earthling has a bit of trouble imitating what Tomar Ray does, but he doesn't even have time to worry about it, because Kilowog, his combat trainer, is already on the scene attacking. After hitting the pilot, the alien tells him he can't let his guard down and begins combat training. With his powers, Kilowog binds Hal's feet and materializes meteors that fall on him, forcing him to build a giant metal shield to avoid being crushed. Even so, Hal still has no control over the ring and his shield is beginning to warp, which makes him even more desperate when Kilowog launches the second meteor at him. To help with the weight, the newcomer builds two steel pillars and Kilowog starts throwing metal discs at him, hitting him squarely. Not satisfied, the big green lantern materializes a medium-sized star that begins to pull Hal towards its core, all while the instructor explains the risks of flying near a star. In the middle of the lessons, Sinistro appears and says that he will train him personally, as he doesn't accept weak members in his troop. Hal then pulls out a sword and begins to fight Sinistro, but realizes that he is much more skilled and begins to be overwhelmed by fear. Realizing this, the reddish alien says that fear weakens the constructs of a lantern and manages to destroy the wall that the human builds with a single kick. Hal materializes a minigun and tries to hit the enemy, but Sinistro manages to defend himself with a shield that he throws at the human, leaving him completely defeated. At the end of the battle, Sinistro says that Abe and Sir was his friend and that Hal insults his memory by using the ring, which makes the pilot give up on being a green lantern. Trying to change his mind, Tomar Ray tells him that the ring never makes mistakes and that if Hal has been chosen, there is something special inside him. But the human still insists that he's not ready and goes back to Earth. Meanwhile, Hector is teaching at the college when, out of the blue, he gains the ability to hear his students' thoughts and discovers that one of them is calling him crazy. In a rage, Hector awakens telepathic powers and causes the student to be ejected out of his chair, which scares the hell out of everyone. Wondering what's going on, Hector ends class early and goes to the lab to analyze his cells, discovering that they are mutating at an absurd rate. Suddenly, 
Hector receives a message from the senator asking him to meet him in his office. There, Hammond congratulates his son on helping the country and Hector is confused at first, but soon understands what's going on when his father shows him the hard drive with the alien's analysis. When he discovers that his father is part of the investigation into the alien, Hector is disappointed that he wasn't chosen for his talent and refuses to continue with the project, leaving the office with his ego badly bruised. At the edge of the Milky Way, Sinistro leads the best lanterns to Parallax and combines their powers to try to trap it, but thanks to the entity's frightening power, the troop is overcome by fear and ends up having its energy sucked away. Defeated, Sinistro returns to the Guardians and tells them everything that has happened, as well as saying that he has calculated his trajectory and that Parallax is coming straight to Oa. Thinking that the Elders are hiding something, Sinistro asks what they know and the Immortals reveal that after years of using the power of will for everything, they have come to the conclusion that they should explore another source of energy. With this in mind, the Guardians met to discuss what to do and decided to use fear, but this energy was extremely unpredictable and had the power to corrupt anyone, which made the Immortals give up on using it, except for one, Parallax. Thinking that this was the way to go, the Guardian of Oa decided to act on his own and entered the Forbidden Chamber to channel the energy of fear, but thanks to this, he was totally corrupted and turned into the world-devouring entity he is today. In order to save the universe, Aben Sur imprisoned Parallax in the Lost Sector where he has remained ever since, but now that he has managed to escape, the former Guardian is coming straight to Oa to take revenge on his former companions and destroy the troop. Hearing all this, Sinistro says he has no other choice and decides to forge yellow rings to fight fear with fear, an extremely risky strategy. Back home, Ferris throws a celebration party and invites most of the town, including Hal and Hector. As soon as he arrives, the pilot asks Carol how they got the contract and she replies that she managed to convince the general that the Sabres only lost the simulation because Hal broke the rules, and furthermore, Tom managed to increase the altitude limit of the fighters even more. After the conversation, Carol begins to walk through the hall and meets Hector who tries to talk about the work with Aben Sir's body, but the senator is nearby and manages to interrupt everything, saying that it is the story of some science fiction book. Annoyed by his father's interference, Hector walks away and Hammond's secretary arrives to say that they should leave. While his father is in the helicopter, the scientist uses his telekinesis to make a tap fly into the tail rotor, which starts the aircraft crashing. With the helicopter about to sweep through the crowd, the ring begins to emit a signal and Hal manages to create the construct of a Hot Wheels car and ramp, allowing the aerial vehicle to perform various maneuvers in midair. Suddenly, the tail rotor detaches from the helicopter and flies into the metal structure just above the stage, causing tons of steel to fall towards Carol. Hal materializes a barrier to save her and ends up forgetting about the aircraft that almost crashes to the ground, but he manages to be quick enough and builds the runway to save everyone. With that, the new Green Lantern makes his first appearance and leaves while everyone records the mysterious hero. After the party, Hector goes home and finally finishes his mutation, leaving his body totally deformed and managing to attract the attention of Parallax. Back in the lab, the scientist analyzes his cells and notices that the mutations are getting faster and faster, which makes him very happy. Suddenly, Amanda appears and touches Hector in an attempt to summon him, but as soon as she does, the senator's son is able to access all her memories, a new psychic power. Back at the lab, Hammond apologizes to his son and reveals that they have found a second DNA in the alien's body that contaminated him, saying that they will do everything to cure him. Hector replies that he's happy like this and that he's never been better. He then goes off on his father, forcing the team's scientists to sedate him before anything bad happens. A few hours later, Hector wakes up completely restrained on a stretcher and the senator tries to calm him down by saying that they'll just do a few tests, but he refuses to allow this to happen and uses telekinesis to make the doctor inject the sedative into his own forehead. The scientist then frees himself from the handcuffs and throws Amanda's body against the glass, as well as pulling his father back and securing him to the stretcher. At that moment, the ring starts sending out a warning signal to Hal, who arrives at the laboratory with all his might. To eliminate him, Hector causes thousands of shards of glass to form a tornado that advances towards the Green Lantern, forcing him to respond with a blowtorch that heats the material and throws the melted glass at the villain. As Hector rides in pain, Hal hits him with a kick that sends the man flying and allows him to unlock the handcuffs from the senator's arm, but the mad scientist isn't done yet and starts throwing oxygen cylinders at the lantern until he knocks him out. Exhausted, Hector falls beside his enemy and touches his arm, gaining access to his last memories of Aben Sur and discovering the Green Lantern's true identity. Wanting to make Hal taste defeat, Hector floats the senator into a closed room and activates two giant blowtorches that set the place on fire, burning his own father while he was still alive. 
Even though he was in a lot of pain, the Green Lantern managed to stretch out his arm and put the ring on Hector's forehead, causing the scientist to go into a kind of hallucination and accidentally drawing the attention of Parallax. When he realizes that a human is wearing the lantern ring that imprisoned him, the Devourer of Worlds decides to change his ways and come personally to Earth to wipe out the humans, sucking the remaining energy from planet Earth so that he can invade Oa and destroy the Guardians. After receiving the message from Parallax, Hal decides to go to the rest of the troop and find Sinistro about to put on the yellow ring. Thinking that this is the wrong decision, the pilot says that they can't give in to fear and asks for help to save the Earth, but the Guardians don't want to risk so much and refuse to help him. Alone, Hal returns to Earth and goes straight to the Ferris hangar where he finds Hector holding Carol prisoner. Wanting to save her, the man takes off the ring and offers to exchange it for the girl, which leaves Hector extremely tempted. After some thought, the Herald of Parallax accepts the exchange and takes the ring, putting it on his finger and finally feeling the power of a lantern. At that moment, Hal Jordan asks him to let Carol go and Hector replies that he lied, while firing a blast of energy at him, but as the fighter pilot is still the true bearer of the ring, the blow stops a few centimeters from his face and returns with everything in the scientist's chest. Taking advantage of Hector's blackout, Hal takes Carol in his arms and hides behind the machines while Parallax invades the hangar to punish his Herald. Extremely overpowered, the entity refuses to admit failure and sucks all the energy of fear out of Hector, causing his body to wither away. With the ring on his finger, Hal decides to come out of hiding and runs to reach the object, but Parallax notices and begins to pull it off with his telekinesis. Knowing that her companion will perish if she does nothing, Carol runs to the computer and activates the saber weapons in the hangar, causing the entity to retreat and saving Hal. With the ring in hand, Carol throws the object to her friend, who puts on the suit and takes them both to safety, but while Hal is saying goodbye to the girl, Parallax begins its attack and starts devouring people who are walking down the street, leaving them trapped due to its gigantic size. In the midst of the confusion, a kindergarten teacher is running from the creature, which fires a blast of energy at her, but just as she is about to be hit, Hal appears and materializes a trebuchet that throws the projectile back. Continuing his attack, the Green Lantern throws a tanker truck towards Parallax and starts shooting at the gasoline, but even with the explosion, the entity doesn't seem to take any damage and releases a ball of energy that knocks Hal away. While the Devourer says he will destroy everything he loves, Hal retakes the oath of the Green Lanterns and gets enough power to push Parallax back a few meters. Suddenly, Hal materializes a kind of propeller and makes the object pass through the entity's body while he follows behind, arriving on the other side and luring the Devourer of Worlds away from the Earth. Flying through the solar system, Hal takes Parallax into a cloud of rocks while trying to dodge the objects, but he ends up being hit by the Devourer which leaves him badly injured. At this point, Hal remembers Kilowog's lesson about the stars and decides to lure Parallax closer to the sun. As soon as he gets close enough to be pulled by gravity, the Lantern creates two fighters and starts flying away from the star, while Parallax tries to hit him. Gathering his last strength, Hal creates the construct of a gigantic hand which he uses to hit Parallax in the face, causing the Devourer of Worlds to be pulled to the surface of the sun and have his body incinerated. With his energy gone, Hal blacks out and is also attracted to the star in the solar system, but is saved by Sinistro, who pulls him back and takes him to the planet Oa, where the entire Green Lantern Corps celebrate their victory alongside their new companion. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.